Welcome to Finance in 5. Greetings once again, friends. Now, when you hear the phrase copper boom, you might think that I'm talking about a policeman who plays the drums. But no, I'm talking about the element copper and how, according to many analysts, it has the potential to rally in price in coming months and years. Today, we look at two key companies which offer exposure to copper and show how you can maximize your potential for gain. Not only will the shares appreciate, but in the meantime, you can live off or reinvest the dividends. Coming up today on Finance in 5. In the Roman era, copper was mined principally on Cyprus, which is the origin of the name of the metal from A.S. Cyprian, metal of Cyprus. As well as being the most electrically conductive element after silver, copper has plenty of industrial uses. As copper recovers from the coronavirus shutdown, one copper producer called Freeport McMarron, which owns and operates one of the biggest and most profitable copper and gold mines in the world, the Grassberg mine in Indonesia, is looking increasingly appetizing to a list of potential buyers, including Newmont. Freeport operates 12 copper mines on three continents, and the Grassberg mine is on the cusp of a big jump in production with a doubling in copper extraction rates during 2021 and gold into 2022, estimated from 2020 levels. So why on earth would they be taking all of this copper out of the ground? Well, because there is demand for it. Here we see a presentation slide of another major Arizona mine project, the Lone Star Leach Mine, which is coming into production during 2020 and 2021. Why would a gold silver miner though want more copper exposure? Well, a bullish outlook for copper revolves around a developing shortage of mine supply starting in 2021 globally. Low prices over the last decade have discouraged mine expansions, and the economics of new mine development don't make a lot of economic sense as long as copper is priced at under $3 per pound. And we can see the history here of copper prices in this chart. Another reason is the rapid growth of electric vehicle usage and production. Quickly becoming a significant new demand driver, copper orders from electric vehicle manufacturers were expected to rise 10 times between 2017 and 2027 before the viral pandemic recession showed up. On top of the incremental demand coming from clean energy and inventions to help our environment, copper's uses in electronics, water and refrigeration, technology, infrastructure and wire products are unique and ever-growing and key to boosting the global economy in the longer term. Mine production of copper is widely believed to have peaked in 2019 and this was before the coronavirus-related shutdowns appeared in 2020. While demand is falling with the worldwide recession this year, when economic recovery begins, a true shortage scenario in the copper market could develop in short order during 2021 and 2022. Okay, so we've talked about how there is a demand for copper and how that's only going to increase, but what we want to know is how much of an impact has the COVID-19 economic slowdown generated for global copper supply and demand? The answer, not much. The reason, mine production has been temporarily closed to keep mining employees safe from infection worldwide. The stopping of production has largely matched the 20% drop in global demand since February. So no one has been working at the mines, but it doesn't matter because there's been no demand. Here we see a graph of the stable inventory situation at the London Metal Exchange over the last five years. Honestly, the appearance of a coronavirus may actually have saved the copper market from a shortage situation in 2020 because stocks were nearing critically low levels in January. Without a doubt, a robust recovery from recession into 2021, which is unlikely but not impossible, may bring a copper shortage in 6-12 to 12 months. But we can be pessimistic and say that that won't happen, sure. But even under more reasonable assumptions, the projected depletion in mine supply in 2020-2021 to 2021 will support copper prices, and record central bank money printing will devalue paper currencies, including the US dollar, with respect to commodities of value, and that includes the precious metal and it includes copper. In terms of getting some easy gains, an investment in Freeport is becoming more interesting by the day. Today, another large mining corporation called Newmont might acquire Freeport. A dramatically higher Newmont stock price means a deal would profit Freeport shareholders. Given stock market capitalizations of $48 billion for Newmont and $16 billion for Freeport, an all-stock deal for $20 to $22 billion is easily digestible. Using Wall Street estimates and back-of-the-envelope maths, the combined companies would have $11 billion in cash flow during 2021 against a net long-term liability sum of $26 billion. The merged enterprise would still be the first on the list for balance sheet safety and flexibility in the large capitalization mining industry, with a net liability to cash flow multiple of 2.5 times. Therefore, the merged entity he could, could pay off all liabilities and IOUs in the next two years and six months. That's effectively what that means. 
if all cash flow is directed towards debt and obligations of the variables remaining equal. Against the current S&P 500 index, reading above five times the same financial strength calculation, any investor wanting a low-cost conservative metals mining investment would have to own a new corporation in their portfolio. Enormous free cash flow in a capital-intensive industry and a 1.7% dividend yield, similar to the S&P 500 average, would also be noteworthy. If Barrick acquired it, in the Newmont versus Barrick battle to be king of the precious metals mining world, the winner of this Freeport purchase sweepstake may well determine which of those companies, Newmont or Barrick, has got the most desirable long-term exposure to gold and silver and copper in a single company investment. Research out there suggests that Newmont taking over Freeport would create a dynamically stronger, more diversified operation combined. Newmont would gain substantial upside to electric vehicle demand for copper and an economic recovery after COVID-19 effects dissipate into 2021 and 2022. And with the uptick in production at Freeport McMoran Mines into 2021, the deal would boost earnings per share and sales per share instantly at Newmont. Then a future spike in copper quotes would turn the deal from a smart decision to a stroke of genius. Here we see 10-year valuation charts of price to trailing cash flow, sales and book value using 2022 earnings estimates. Newmont is sitting at 20 times earnings per share. Freeport McMoran is 7 times earnings per share without any material change in metal quotes, without copper increasing in value at all. So revenue for both companies is projected at around 11 to $12 billion for 2020. However, Freeport sales are set to skyrocket to $18 billion into 2022. So if we get a spike in copper prices, yearly revenue generation in the 20 to $25 billion range is a real possibility. And under a bullish scenario for copper prices, Freeport McMoran may be selling for less than five times forward annual earnings and three to four times cash flow. And this is completely amazing. By 2022, the business combination could reach $6.5 billion in after-tax net profit after accounting for minor synergies like refinancing Freeport's debt at Newmont's credit rating. $5.5 billion in depreciation would generate $12 billion in annual cash flow on $30 billion in revenues. These estimates are based on current Wall Street consensus forecasts for the individual businesses on a slight rise in metals pricing. But using a $15 Freeport acquisition price per share and a flat Newmont quote, the $70 billion in new market equity looks like it's quite undervalued. 2.3 times sales, 6 times cash flow, 11 times earnings are half the present multiples on Newmont results. Anticipating a 50 to 75% climb in the merged Newmont Freeport equity quote seems appropriate over 24 months. And then commodity prices probably will rise precipitously and the stock quote is propelled even higher. But even if Freeport doesn't get taken over by one of the big players, let's take a look at the rising prices and the rising price trends over the course of the last 52 weeks in the precious metals markets of gold, silver and copper. Below, you can review the rapid rebound in quotes off the March lows reached on the coronavirus pandemic sell-off panic. Essentially, gold's eight-year high in June may be set to transfer strength to the other metals with an industrial demand component. The copper investment setup and reasons for ownership are improving with the US economy reopening since early May and worldwide rebound characteristics unfolding into 2021. Newmont has been my top choice of the major gold and silver miners for quite a few years. If you want precious metals exposure with leverage, Newmont is the one to buy first based on sound risk reward analysis. You can see the super positive upside momentum in a number of indicators alongside a 60% price gain over the course of the last year of trading. The chart highlights growing evidence that buyers are retaining the upper hand and pushing prices upwards. The green arrow points to an uptrending accumulation distribution line situation, which is a measurement of the daily closing value versus the intraday high and low trades. So the ascending line tells us that plenty of buying has been occurring during the trading day. The red arrow points to a healthy uptrend on slow volume days over the last year. So to me, this is a very clean setup for Fremont. There might be a short term drop, but after that, there's going to be a long stretch up coming. So we'll have to see what happens into July and August. I think that there's probably going to be a buying opportunity in July and August as this stock drops. But then, yeah, as I say, a long stretch up coming. I'm just going to buy this stock quietly, acquiring £50 a month here, £200 a month there. Just keep doing the same thing over and over. Meanwhile, the stock should go up. My view is, based on every technical factor out there, we, we could be looking at a Grand Slam home run. But this isn't a penny stock or a pink sheet stock or a ripoff stock or anything of the kind. This is a company with sound fundamentals is generating decent levels of free cash flow and is on the cusp of a huge uptick in per share valuations, in my humble opinion. For what it's worth, I'm only offering information that I hope and that I've done my research and I believe can actually put money in your pocket. That's the entire purpose of this channel. 
Anyway, thanks very much for listening and hopefully I'll speak to you soon. All the very best.